Hi guys, today is a new video on glue and sealants. The last one I did was like nine years ago, maybe longer. And I think it's just time for an update, don't you? But you know what's really funny? You're going to find out that my opinion hasn't changed a whole lot in 10 years. There are, uh, or nine, 10 years. Uh, there are a few new things out now that we've learned a few tricks with that work good. But it's still pretty much the same stuff. But maybe you're new to jewelry making. Or maybe you feel a little tentative. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Or what can I do to make it work? So come on over here and we'll talk about it today. And we'll figure it all out together. And you will know what to do. Okay, guys. So we're going to take some of the mystery out of what um, types of glues work best for jewelry. Now, I have my old faithful ones. And there are some, you know, along the way in between that, you know, maybe you like or someone you know likes better has recommended. That's fine. Try everything. That's, that's my biggest recommendation is try everything, but try it on junk first. Don't try, don't try <laughs> anything on, you know, something you're working on and, and labored hard and long on and then find out, oh, no, it doesn't work, you know. But I'll tell you a few things that I know work. Okay, first of all, that would be... E6000. Now some people are afraid to use E6000 because it's stinky and because it, um, you know, it is carcinogenic. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. But it just seems to me that some of the glues that work the best or the agents that work the best seem to be, you know, waxing to that side, being a little bit carcinogenic. So you just have to use care and caution with it. Keep it off your hands. Don't eat while you're using it. Please don't eat. If you're going to drink stuff, put it in a closed container. And then you should be all right. Like, you know, one of the coffee mugs that has the top, the thermal ones or something. You'll be all right with that. And then, uh, you know, just careful use of it. And another thing, too, is like if you do a lot of production work, uh, try not to use it every day. This is what I was told. Um, one time when I was new to E6000, I called in to the Poison Control Board to ask them about it. Because I was concerned about the cancer warnings on it and they said you know what we found that generally you'll be okay with it so long as it, you just don't use it every day and keep it off your skin when you're done working get it off your skin even if you are working and you see that it's on your skin just get it off but it works well I have had such tremendous success with this glue for well now over 30 years and my things just don't fall apart when I use these 6000 but there are a few tips with it I like to use these little these little guys. Um, I find I have less waste when I use them. I press from the bottom and go up. And yeah, if I've got a big project, I may go through two of them. And, and you know, it isn't the most economical way to use this stuff. But then, in a way, it is because uh, if you have any experience with this stuff, you know if you leave it open, it'll kind of ooze out and there'll be like glue all around the top of it. And, all, you know, and it, it just it dries up fast inside if you forget to cap it. And, you know, you do. I have thrown so many half-used big tubes out that it's not even funny. So I found that by using these, I had more control on, on the uh, glue. And also, I actually wasted less. So this little one is the only one we carry at the website now. If you want the bigger ones, you can get them in any hardware store, any craft store. I mean, it's everywhere. It's not, it's not hard to find if you want the big tube, but we don't sell the big tube anymore because we found this works better, and a lot of our regular customers agree with us. So if you're newer to this glue, you might you know, want to try doing that. Now, um, when you glue things like, I use this in assemblage a lot. So if you're doing metal to metal, what you might want to do is kind of rough up your surfaces a little bit first before you glue them together and then that gives it a little bit more sticky power, a little bit more tooth and it works out better for you that way. Um, if you're just like setting little pearls and stuff into it and, and little resin roses, porcelain roses, whatever it is that you like to put in, um, then that's not necessary. Now back when I first used the E6000, um, I noticed something and I was also told this, that E6000 will eat the foil off of rhinestones foil back stones. Well, the truth of it is, is sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't, but you never know. And it doesn't do it right away. 
so you find out down the road you sell your work a customer might come back to you and say hey look what happened and show you a picture it's all you know weird looking or um you know or you might notice it you know yourself down the road oh look the stone looks kind of strange it's because the e6000 corroded it ate it whatever you want to call it reacted poorly with it um i'm finding this happens less now and i'm not sure why but if you want to be safe, don't use this on foil back stones. Period. Now, there's a few. There are uh, some exceptions. Like for example, um, I think the last time we were together, I showed you these uh, lovely Bohemian stones that, you know, they're all beautiful and they have foiling. This is what they look like on the backs. Like this. It's just kind of just glass. Okay. Um, there's really no foil to speak of. This is just, um, this isn't a flaw in this. It's just the way that they put the inclusions on. They use a type of foil that's embedded in, in the glass. So you could use E6000 with these and it's no problem. You don't need to worry about it. It's fine. You know, and like to set your little resin cameos and things like that. Perfect. No, no problem. It's just, if something has some foil on the back of it like see we're going to do a bunch of these um flat backs now, i've done it i've 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 gone ahead and i just had a few of them and put them on with this and i was okay but you just don't know you know you just don't know so you might want to use something else okay so you might say all right okay i don't use these six thousand so what do i do this is what you do and this is probably the most hated glue <laughs> people do not like this glue and the reason they do not like this glue is because it's really stringy and it's it's a pain to learn how to use but the good news is you can learn how to use it okay gs hypotube cement it's been tried and true for years i know some people swear by different cements that the rhinestone wholesalers sell now and the places that do all the um dance apparel and all that we doing a lot of uh, hot fix type stones and other stones you're gluing stuff on to to um, you know fabric and stuff like that and that's fine if you found something else that you like and it doesn't you know take so much work to use it then fine go use it you know I always say that no matter what it is if you found something else and it's working for you and it's holding up then use it and tell me about it why not you why don't you why not you <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you? <laughs> but anyway, GS Hypotube Cement, um, most of the people who do vintage repairs are going to tell you this is it. You know, this is where I learned about it when I did vintage. But here's what it does. Okay, so you got this little thing here. And uh, it, it likes to kind of cement itself shut. So you want to be sure that you get the tip really clean. You can see it's got this long uh, thread thing, like a needle thing here. And it, I don't know if you can see that, but it's already starting to bubble <laughs> yeah. out. Can you see? Out, yeah. yeah, it's already oozing out. So, hey, take advantage of it. This is what I do. I almost never use it straight out of the tube. Once in a bit, like in a finding where it's a big cavity like that, yeah, I could go ahead and do that. I'm not going to this time, but this is what I normally do. I, I press from the bottom so that I will get the best advantage. And sometimes it, it will resist you a little bit because it's already, if it's, if it's not a new tube, it's already trying to glue itself shut, which is another reason why it's a pain. But there you go. That's going to be enough. Okay. Now you need to work quickly and I like to try to keep it off of it. You know, so I like to go right ahead and close it. And sometimes this takes a little doing too. Now Diane says that she has a way of doing it where she puts it down here and she can get it in easier. Yeah, I think it's hard. To so get it. I, I just did it. You could try it that way if you want instead of holding it up here and trying to get it down and you know hold it down and push it in. That worked pretty well. But now because you've done this and you've exposed it to air the way you have, um, it's going to set up quick. So you've got to work quick if you're going to do it this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself a few little stones out of here and try to find one that looks like it's going to fit. And I would say this one will. So that is my selected stone. I picked it up with my crystal katana, which I really love. It's an expensive tool for what it is. 
I do not carry them because I cannot buy them wholesale. It's a big long story. The company won't let me and that period the end. So I don't carry them. But do I love them? Yes, I do. Um, but I carry the pick me up tool, which is this one. As you can see, it's virtually the same thing, does the same thing. So anyway, but I have it on my katana now. So I'm just going to let it sit there while I quickly get some of this glue before it's all dried up and put it right down there in that hole. And it's the same way if you got, you know, uh, those uh, pieces from us that have a lot of uh, little depressions in them. You could set stones and do pave work. So there it is. Put right down in there. Just kind of tap it in place and kind of make sure that, you know, you don't have a bunch of glue leak around the edges, which I don't. Not that I can see. Not any that's important. And there you go. That's it. And you're not going to have to worry about that getting weird say this was a crystal stone where you're going to really see it if it went bad this one you wouldn't so much it's not going to happen if you use hypotube cement another time when you might want to use hypotube cement is um, when you're using a part like this you're going to set like say you want to set a magnifying glass type stone in here okay then that would be a good choice is hypotube cement okay because e6000 a little bit too glurpy and it'll show and with a magnifying type glass stone you will see it so how do you do that well you'll take i'm not going to put any on here because i'm not i don't have one to set and it's just not important anyway but i'm just going to show you kind of i would get a little bit on here see it's already set up can't hardly use it and just but i would apply it right in can you see that do i have it in view yeah this is it I would set, do you see this little lip here, right inside there? It's, 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 it's um, fussy, but it would be fussy no matter what glue you used. So just get it in here and try to get it so that when the stone makes contact with the mount, that it's not going to slide around and make a mess on the back. And also so that it stays right at the edge. Because if it creeps over into the main part of the, the backing, it's not going to look nice. And you can clean it off, but it's not easy. You could scratch it. So um, that's where it can be a little fussy when you do that, is to get it right in here in the lip. But actually, a stone like that, you could do it with E6002. It wouldn't hurt it because there's no foil. But it's just a little too glurpy to suit me. So I use HypoTube when I do it. And yeah, it's, it's messy. But like I say, if you put it out on a piece of plastic first, and work fast you're fine be sure that you clean that tip off and get this right back in here quickly so that you know you don't have an issue then if you're setting big stones that have a back on them you could work out of the tube because you have more of a surface to apply to so you don't have to worry so much about it leaking all over everywhere and being of no use you know if it's if it's a if it's a stone say you wanted to use a uh, hypo tube on a stone like this you wouldn't have to but if you did um, you have a lot of surface here so you can put a lot of this on now you want to put too much I've had people in the past tell me they were trying to set like rhinestones into cups like to um, fix a bracelet or something like this it won't set up it won't set up and I said, what, what are you doing? Show me what you're doing. And they would have like, it'd be like a big cup, not a little tiny one, like a little, like, um, let me show you an example. Like, this would be a small, small piece to set into. Can you see that? Yeah. Just need a little one. Basically, I would do what I did here, or if I could get it off there controlled, I might take it right off the tip, but then I've been using this stuff for a while, so I kind of have a feel for it. But, um, you know, say you had something that has a whole bunch of these, They'll go and they'll fill up every one of those cavities to the brim with glue. Or say it's like one of those Gita, is that how you say Gita type bracelets where it has the prongs and you want to put a little bit of glue down in the back to hold it. Um, some people do, some people don't. Anyway, um, they'll put it half full and then they'll say, oh, it never dried. It's because it can't. It can't, you, you got too much in there, too, too much to dry. And too much, like you go ahead and you put your stone in so it blocks the air. It's not going to dry either. So it just will never set up. So in that case, you want to be sure you have enough, but less is more. Less is more. If I was putting this on, I would just take a little bit of this, a nice little good fat drop. and just stick it right in there. Take it, sit it down. Or I probably have it down already. Just take a little, stick it in there. Go ahead, get my 
stone, get it plopping on, and voila. Now it's not going to stick because there's no glue under there, but you know, you got the point. So the glue will grab it. Okay. Some people say, well, don't I want to like pick it up first? And then put the glue all over the back of it like that. Well, you could, but it doesn't. It's it's clumsy. Yeah. It's clumsy. It's messy. You're probably not gonna. You wanna kick yourself if you do it that way. So don't do it that way. Just put it into the depression first, and then apply your stone, and you'll go fast. If you've ever seen the um, video that's on YouTube about the 1928 factory, and it shows the lady setting stones there, they have a very clever way of doing it where one sets the stones and the other one takes like a paper cup where they've cut the end of it out and they put over top of it and they isolate the area so that they can see down there and make sure all the little pave stones are, are filled into the setting and none of them are missed. It's really, really cool. If you get a chance, just um, Google it or go into the YouTube um, search box and you'll be able to bring it up. They have a tour of the factory. Of course, I've given you a few tours of the factory myself on there, but not, not like this one. They show you actually all the processes and how they do them. So that's cool. So now, these are my two glues of choice, most of all. E6000, GS HypoTube, they will work and we know it. Now, other people like two-part epoxy glues, like Devcon glue and Loctite and a few others. The Loctite is good, like if you're going to set the resin stones, acrylic stones that don't have backs and you don't want to see glurpy glue in the back and everything like that. The, the Loctite I like the best and professionals generally use the Loctite. We used to have some on the site. I don't know if we do right now. We should probably replace it because some do like that. I, I don't use that kind of material to set very often, so I don't use it a whole lot, but I do know if I was going to. I would choose Loctite. Um, another thing that you can use is, um, I want to tell you about this. <clears throat> okay, this is Beetle on Bead Fix Gel, and it's basically super glue. You don't want to use this with stones unless you have to, unless you, you know. I don't like, why am I showing it to you if I don't like it? This is why. <laughs> because there are some times you just need something like this, okay? You're doing a fix repair, maybe. Well, no, no I would do that. I would do repairs with this, <laughs> yeah, but since there are just sometimes like so, some people say, um, now I have to do some more research on it. And feel free to correct me. Um, some people like to, if they're gluing polymer clay things together, they like to use this stuff. I've heard other people say, no, 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 you never do that. You know, you do it a different way. Um, so I've got to do a little bit more investigating on that before I tell you do it. But I mean, I have, and it's worked. And it didn't come apart but um, if you have to use some kind of super glue when you do stuff like say, say for example you want to glue a knot real quick this would be good that would work fine on there this would be good because you can use the GS hypotube cement but you see how stringy it is and it takes a while to set up so you might want to use something like this we don't have you on the site right now I don't think but we probably should because I found a box of it up in the office. So I don't know why they put it on, but we'll find out about that. Okay, so that, that's another um, idea for you. That, But these are my main two. There's another one called um, Crafter's Pick. And it's in a bottle that looks like this. Now, this is probably a convoluted way to show you because this is not what you use. This is for people who glue acrylic stones on fabric. Okay or stick it down in puffy paint or whatever, I don't know. But anyhow, I digress. It's in a bottle that looks like this. It's about this size. It's the company's name is Crafter's Pick, but you want, the name of it is called The Ultimate. U-L-T-I-M-A-T-E. We're out of it and it's on its way. We normally always have some, but it works about as good as E6000 actually. The only thing about it is it takes about a week to set up really good, so you can't be in a hurry with it. But if you have aller allergies, if you can't stand stinky E6000, um, you just worry about it because it is poisonous, basically. Uh, but what glue really isn't. Um, this one, this one uh, doesn't have a cancer warning on it. But anyway, um, 
it's more I, of a water base. It's it? a water based glue, and it is very good. I've made things like great big picture frames where it had heavy stuff on it, and it worked. But you have to let it glue. F you have to let it dry for a long time before it's very secure. So just keep that in mind. And what you want is crafters pick the ultimate. And it's if you want to buy it from me, it's going to be here in a couple of days. So we usually almost always have it. For some reason, we ran out. It happens. Okay, so now what else is there? Okay, well, this is something I'd like to tell you about. Um, we really don't have a lot of time for me to show you, in fact, how to do it. But, you know, Sarah Loon, we've talked about Sarah Loon a lot. And that's the two-part epoxy clay by Swarovski. The stuff smells so much like resin. Ugh. Really? Okay. Oh yeah. It's it's. Some people are sensitive. It might give you work work with good um, ventilation. It's not horrible, but whatever. So what I would do to mix this up, I would take you know, one part to one part equal and mix it up. And that's dried out on the end, so I can't use it. But this should be okay here. Yeah, it's soft yet. Um, just mix up you know, one part to one part and make a ball, okay? And then what you can do is you can pinch little balls of it off to stick on the stuff. Say you're doing assemblage or whatever, you don't want to glue stuff in. You can push the stone right down into it and it makes itself a, a little setting. It's really, really, really cool. And another way that it would work really good. Okay, I like to use this cuff. You've probably seen it before, my indent cuff. This is raw brass. And I love these uh, pie crust mounts on them. They just really work and I love to put resin and put watch parts and stuff like that. But then you got to glue it on here, okay? And sometimes then it wants to slide and so you've got to try and find a way to prop it up and all that, you know, stuff. And I have found that you can take a lot of serolone mixed up really good. You got to make sure that you got each, you know, the parts equal so it sets up good. And you can put it on the back of here, which this is perfect because it's a little bit concave on the back. And you could put it like, you know, you got to maybe get little dots of it around the edge here and some in the middle. So you have a bunch of little places and then stick it together mm, and then put it somewhere where it won't slide and it will be on there like the best glue in the world. Serolune is a good glue too. So you can use it as a glue when you do your assemblage. If you'd rather not use E6000, Serolune works very, very well. And I can recommend it highly. Now, as far as expense of use, I don't know that it would be more expensive than using a big 2B6000. Um, Sterling is, you know, you hear swaths and you think immediately, oh, that's too expensive for me. I can't. Not really. This is a big box of it. Um, when it comes complete, like when we send it to you, you get the two parts like this. This is how it comes from manufacturing. You get like five sets in here. So you won't get it like this. This is like one new set. Okay. And you'll get it like this. And um, it costs, I don't know, what is it? Have you? $8.95, $9.95, something yeah. like that. It's about the same as good old crystal clay, which basically is the same thing, except Serolune is way, way better. Crystal clay might work too. Use it as a glue. Try it if you got some. You know, try it on something that doesn't matter first. But Ceralun is the bomb. And if I've got my choice, I'm not using that. I'm using Ceralun. So that's, you know, that's just a stray case. We used to carry it a long time. We used to carry a couple of those, those. And I just always found them tacky and fussy to use. And I never liked them. So I still don't. Um, they'll work. But if I can get Ceralun, I'm using Ceralun, baby. Let me tell you what. Okay, so that's on the glues stuff. Now about the sealants. Let's get into the sealants. I'll just turn this over in case I need a little surface. I don't think I'm going to. There are a number of sealants that you can use. Okay. Um, normally when you're doing something with brass, say, you know, You've, uh, say you use a bunch of alcohol ink and stuff on this and you got it all cutesy and you like it and you colored it up and there's some patina. You could use some Krylon spray lacquer. If you've used acrylic paint though, or some, not acrylic, alcohol ink. If you've used alcohol ink or if you've used some of the paint markers, spray from a distance and back using Krylon 
matte spray lacquer. You've heard me say that many, many times. It's the way to do it. And then let it sit and then go back and do another another coat, like very misting light. If you get in there and spray the heck out of it, you know what's going to happen? Color's going to run everywhere. And you're going to be very sad. Because that would be very hard to clean off and start over. So you wrecked it. So stand back, very light misting coats, and always try it first on any new markers that you have. Try it first and make sure they're perfectly dry because of anything markers like to run. So, okay, so what do you do then? Sometimes you don't really have to seal it, but normally it's best if you do. Okay, so another selection that you might have that would work is sometimes you can use jewelry allergy shield, which we carry at the site, but again, you have to test first. It's a great sealant. It's, it's meant to be a sealant for you to protect your skin. Like some people would take it and seal all around the edge in here of the rye brass because a lot of people have grass allergies. And then that way, that metal will never touch your skin and you'll never break out from it. Unless you happen to be allergic to allergy shield, then generally people aren't. You know, that's the way they formulate, formulated it. So you could use it that way. Another way that I like jewelry shield is say that you're um, doing a big assemblage, you have a lot of metal parts, and maybe you have parts that you've applied to your backing piece, but you forgot to seal them. Well, then you can just go in with your jewelry allergy shield and open it up. Well, this one seals itself shut. No, no. Just open it up and just paint it on there. The only thing is with this, it's a little bit glossy. So you, ooh, and it's, it's potent too, <laughs> but it's a little bit glossy. Um, so you have to be careful with that. It's not matte. I have never seen one that was a matte because it's really not made for it to be a top sealant, but it's an excellent one. Another thing some people do is they use nail polish. Now, I've always been against clear nail polish as a sealant because what does nail polish do? It cracks and chips. So, it smells bad. well, it, yeah, but that gas is off in time. You know, you're not going to take, you're not going to like paint it all up and then take it out and try to sell it right that day. I would hope not because it's not going to do too good. But anyway, um, it just, um, I lost my thought. Oh, nail polishes. Yeah, it chips easy. So if you're going to use nail polish, you're going to need to spend some money. You don't go in and buy the LA Colors cheap stuff in the dollar store. You don't have to buy OPI or something. The high-end SE, OPI, one of those higher-end um, nail polishes which cost you like 10, 11, 12 bucks because they won't chip, or at least not easily. So that's why I would say to use those if you're going to use nail polish. And that goes to like, if you like to enamel with nail polish, fine. But you're going to have to seal over it with something else like OPI if you use it because the old cheap old ones that you see are going to crack and chip. So they would have to seal. But if you used OPI, like red, blue, whatever color that you want, um, then it probably wouldn't do it. On the other hand, you could get a couple hundred bucks into enough colors to do what you want to do because OPI is expensive. So. Um, Maybe it's better to use acrylic paint to color and then use just as a sealant over the top of that. Acrylic paint is great. You can spray the Krylon over acrylic paint very easily, very nicely. Just make sure that it's dried for two days before you do it. Or else it, the acrylic paint being water-based, it can like not be set up quite all the way and then it makes it weak and it can get gummy and glurp off where you don't want to do that. Okay, another thing that you can use for a sealant is you can use diamond glaze. You guys know about this. This is about the only resin type thing that we carry at the site right now. Um, we love resin, but I just, you know, you can get it anywhere. Resins are everywhere. So you just choose which one you like the best. We carry this as a courtesy to our customers. They like it that we carry this. It's water-based, dimensional adhesive. Yes, you can use it for an adhesive, but it needs to be very lightweight stuff. 
So you could possibly glue on some of these little stones with diamond glass. Um, I don't think I would, but it might work for you. So, I mean, people have done it. So that's the thought. So you can use diamond glaze over top of stuff. It works good over sealed paper. It has to be Mod Podge paper first if you're going to do that, like in a mount. Um, you can do it over metal. But it, it's you got to get the bubbles out because it is a resin. It will make bubbles. And then you got to let it sit for a while and let it cure. And you're going to have a fairly hard finish on it. And you're going to... Um, have shine. So if you don't want shine, you don't want to use this. Another thing is, I would not use diamond glaze over anything brass ox. Because then what it does, it will kind of pool a little bit and it turns blue. I don't know why, but diamond glaze doesn't like brass ox finish and it will get weird on you. So don't use diamond glaze when you're using brass ox. I've had no problem with it on uh, you know, the silver or the copper finish, but I don't know, maybe even a copper ox. You might have to be careful. You might have to test it first. But I know brass ox, it doesn't like, so keep that in mind. Another thing that I wanted to tell you before I get out of here today is um, Swelligant Clear Sealant is awesome. And it's so matte, you just don't even see it, but it's on there. You paint it on. And thin coats. You can paint it on virtually just about anything. It's inexpensive. It lasts a while. Uh, you never want to paint straight out of the bottle because then you'll pollute the bottle with your brush. But um, just put a little bit in a cup, you know, one of those little tiny mixing cups that you get and uh, work out of that. And it, it's great. It works great. And you don't even see it. What I like this for is like if I hand patina or colorize a raw brush chain, dip it down in this and then just hang it up fantastic it gets it all and you, it's just easy you can use Krylon spray too but this is better in that case um, also it's very good like when you do patina well it's made for that because the swelligant line is a patina line okay so if you do the patina say over polymer clay or some of your other polymer clay type things where you need it to get a little bit of a finish on it uh, you could use swell again. I also like it over patina on brass. It's excellent. Um, I love this best. My second choice would be Renaissance Wax. Renaissance Wax, though, um, for worn items, things that you wear, um, sometimes you have to redo it after a while. And I don't, when I put my sealant on it, I want to be done. I don't want to have to reapply it. So, but it is beautiful over a handmade finish that where you've created the patina and you like did torching and stuff like that. Like for example, um, if I can get it fast enough, I think it's in here. Let me try not to fall. Oh, I must have moved it. Oh no, here it is. Javi, can you see it? I can't quite get it. Over here, there's there's a necklace in there. It's on one of those big wide blanks. Okay, I'll get it. Can you get it? Yeah. I'll just show you a for example. I meant to get it out before we started. Oh, she's having trouble getting over there too. Yeah, just come around this side and you'll get it. Sorry to make you guys wait, but I just really want you to see this. Okay, do you see in there there's a Y? Right there, right there. Okay. This is something Jordy and I made together a long time ago when I was showing how to make jewelry. And this, we finished it off. We didn't use Ren Wax. We used Swelligant Clear Coat on this to finish it. And all it is was raw brass, you can see. And um, we just dinged it up with a texturizing hammer and then we heated it with a torch, got a little bit of glow on it. Dinged it a little bit more in it because now the metal's soft and, and you can ding it. It works good that way. We have video on this. You can scroll back and see them. There's several of them. And then, uh, then we did the darkening solution and then we scrubbed it off and distressed it. And at the end we put the swelling in. And it's fantastic. It works great. It just looks like we just made it. So... That's a very good thing, this. So, okay, guys, I think I got most of them. If you know of something that you like and you want to make a comment about it on this video, that would be great. Please, no links. Just put the name of it. Um, I would love to know. Um, and be nice. <laughs> That's all I ever ask. 
I love to see those thumbs up. I love it when you subscribe. I love it when you like. I love it when you comment. It just makes my heart sing. But I need people to be nice. So if you have a suggestion, by all means, let's hear it. Let's hear what you have to say. The only thing I can say about what I've shown you here today is that I know these work. Absolutely know they work. Okay? And the Ceralune especially is a great, it's an absolutely great uh, adhesive. It's a little bit unique and different, but it works fantastic. So I hope that takes a little of the mystery out of things for you. I hope maybe you'll go and experiment and try. You know, it is good to experiment one, you know, at first get your glue technique down because um, even with the e 6 you have to have a little bit of technique or you can get a star of bond and it doesn't stay together. Another thing I want to mention real quick, E6000 straight to glass is like metal to glass. Say you have a, 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 a hunk of glass of something. I don't know what's, and then you want to, and you want to, and you want to uh, adhere it to um, a piece of brass. It won't work too good. It just doesn't work too good. Another thing too, if you spray paint this stuff to put color on it first, rough it up a little bit before you put anything on top of it and adhere it with E6000 or Seralune for that matter, because all you're adhering to is that top paint layer when you do that. And you know, that's weak. That's not going to work too good. So rough it up first and get a little bit of that, that metal popping through again and you'll be fine. So those are my tips for today. Thanks a lot for stopping in and looking. I'm sorry I know it's long, but you know what? I got to tell you everything. So now you know everything I know anyway. Hey, love you guys. Thanks for watching. Come back soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.